Hello everyone, welcome to MachineX webinar. Today's my topic is uh, state of art image processing across different domains. My name is Shubham Goyal and I'm a data wizard at MachineX. So let's move to the our today's agenda. So today we are going to talk about image processing history and different approaches to like uh, achieve image processing. Then we will talk about a little bit about uh, like residual neural networks and the performances of uh, uh, residual neural network and different approaches. Then I have a little demo application for you all uh, using these image processing approaches. Now before we jump into the main topic, I would like to talk a bit about our tribe machine X. So MachineX is a group of data wizards who love to play with data and create wonders out of it. And along with that, it's a service provider who gives solutions or to different clients on AI and ML. It is a group of thinker who loves to contribute to the development of AI and ML. And hence you can see uh, the things we are doing. We built a library called KSAI, which is an ML library consists of various algorithms written in Scala. We regularly post blogs on various ML and AI topics. We do internal knowledge sessions as company culture and release them on YouTube so that others can also view and learn from it. Apart from sharing our knowledge about ML and AI, we are going to release one of our product called Maggot. Maggot is an intelligent meeting assistant tool which can do a lot of wonders while attending meetings. It will give video recording facility and along with that, it will give the AI powered features like automatic item action item generation, emotional analysis, facial detection and many more. As you have already imagined, if you have these powers while doing meeting, you can compete with Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> so this is how our Maggot dashboard uh, is currently look like. Surely we are going to add some more features in it in coming time. Apart from Maggot, we have a, a different product we are working on and that is FishEye. FishEye is an intelligent marketing tool uh, which helps you to identify potential target companies. Like in this screenshot, I had opted for uh, a company in sector artificial intelligence uh, which is located in like its location should be in United States and the company size should be 0 to 500. As I already told you, we had built a library called KSAI and it's a machine learning library uh, written in Scala. It also, uh, you can also contribute to this library. Just go on GitHub and uh, search for KSAI. Uh, every open source idea from you is uh, heartily invited. Moreover, we we regularly do our innovation projects in our innovation labs. We do K TOK sessions, and as I told already told you, we publish them on YouTube. We regularly contribute to society through blogs and open source contributions. And uh, last but not least, we have. Uh, many certified professionals in machine learning and deep learning. So this is all about machine X. Uh, now let's move to our main agenda. That is state of the art image processing across domains. Before that, let's uh, talk a little bit about image processing. So image processing is a method to perform some operation on an image. In order to get an enhanced image or to extract some useful information from it, it is basically type of signal processing in which input is an image and output may be image or characteristic or features associated with that image. Nowadays, image processing is among rapidly growing technologies. It forms core research area within engineering and computer science discipline too. So there is a vast difference between image processing, how it was done in past years and how it is uh, like 
all AI engineers and machine learning engineers doing it in uh, like uh, these days. So let's talk about the traditional way of doing image processing. So uh, the traditional pipeline for image, uh, okay, we are talking about image classification here. Uh, so tr the traditional pipeline for image classification involves two modules. The first one is feature extraction and the second is classification. Uh, it is also same for today's process, but the, but the way they are achieving these uh, like modules, uh, they have a different problem. Uh, okay, like feature extraction uh, previously in like it's involved extracting a high level of information from raw pixels value that can capture the distinct among the categories involved. The feature extraction is done in a supervised, unsupervised manner, sorry, uh, wherein the classes of the image have nothing to do with information extracted from pixels. So some of the traditional and widely used features are GIST, HOG, SIFT, and LBP, etc. So after the feature is extracted, a classification module is trained with the images and their associated labels. A few examples of traditional like uh, module are SVM, logistic regression, or we can say random forest and decision tree and so on. So what was the problem with these uh, like methods? The problem with this, this pipeline is this involved too many heuristic as well as manual labor to tweak parameters according to the domain to reach a decent level of accuracy. By decent here, I mean reaching close to human level accuracy. And that's why it took years to build a good computer vision system like OCR, face verification, image classifier, and many object detectors, and so on, that can work with wide variety of data encountered during practical application using traditional computer vision. And the, another problem with this method is that it is completely different from how we human learns to recognize things. As you all know, AI and its all subdomains are inspired by us, the humans. <coughs> For example, just after birth, a child is incapable of perceiving his surroundings. But as he progresses and processes data, he learns to identi identify things. This is the psychology behind deep learning, wherein no hard-coded feature extract extractor is built in. It combines the extraction and classification modules in one integ integrated system, and it learns to extract by discriminating representations from the images and classify them based on supervised data. So image processing, or we can say image, image classification across all domains. Uh, if we have to like see some applications of image processing in nowadays, uh, the first come strike my mind is healthcare section or healthcare sector. So imagine being able to detect blindness, blindness before it happened. Million of people suffer from diabetic rectopathy uh, like uh, retinopathy uh, and the leading cause of uh, blindness among working aged adults uh, is diabetic uh, retinopathy. Many hospitals in India hope to detect and prevent these diseases among people living in rural areas where medical screening is difficult to conduct. Solution using uh, artificial intelligence or image processing will improve the hospital's ability to identify potential patients. So, okay guys, I am seeing a lot of people are asking questions. So you can like uh, write down your questions uh, here and I will give, I will follow up uh, you with, uh, like follow up you after this session. So the another uh, application is pulmonary uh, chest X-ray defect detection. So, uh, like, uh, imagine we can accurately detect uh, whatever problem is there in X-ray, uh, and that too with uh, like increased accuracy 
and accurately. So the another sector is, is uh, manufacturing sector. As we all know, steel is the one of the most important building materials of modern times. Steel buildings are resistant to natural and man-made wear, which had made the material you know, like uh, ubiquitous according the or around the world. To help make production steel more efficient, image processing can help identifying defects. Or image processing or computer vision system or we can say intelligence system can monitor products for their quality control. So whenever I think about image processing or computer vision problem, there is one algorithm strike my mind and that is convolution neural network or we can say CNN or ConNet. So a convolution, convolution neural network are a special kind of multi-layer neural network designed to recognize visual patterns directly from pixel images with minimal uh, like pre-processing. Several pre-trained models used in transfer learning and they are based on large convolutional neural network. In general, CNN was shown to excel in a wide range of computer vision tasks. Its high performance and its easiness in training are two main factors driving the popularity of CNN over the last few years. So a typical CNN has two parts. The first one is convolution base and the second is a classifier. So a convolution base is composed by a stack of convolution and pooling layers. The main goal of convolution base is to generate features from the image. For an intuitive explanation of con convolutional and uh, pooling layers, you can refer to the Nolders blocks. You can just write uh, about uh, convolution neural network on Nolders block and you get a number of blocks there. The second part is the classifier, which is usually composed by fully connected layers. The main goal of the classifier is to classify the image based on the detected features. A fully connected layer is a layer whose neurons have full connections to all activation uh, in the previous layer. So as I already told you, uh, there are different uh, like pre-trained models uh, which use transfer learning for these image processing tasks. So let's talk about a little bit uh, on transfer learning. So a transfer learning is a popular method in computer vision because it allows to build accurate models in a time-saving way. With transfer learning, instead of starting the process or the learning process from scratch, you can start from patterns that have been learned when solving a different problem in a different situation. In this way, you can leverage previous learnings and avoid starting from scratch. So the transfer learning is an application of skills, knowledge or attitudes that were learned in a one situation and we can apply it in another situation. Transfer learning is uh, usually expressed through the use of pre-trained model as I to earlier told you. So suppose a teacher has a year of experience in a particular topic he or she teach. With all this accumulated information, the lectures that students get is a concise and brief overview of that topic. So it can be see, seen as a transfer of information from a learned uh, to a no voice. Keeping in mind this analogy, we compare this to neural network. A neural network is, a train, uh, is trained on the data and this network gains inf information or knowledge from this data which is combined as weights of that network. These weights can be extracted and then transferred to like any other neural network. So instead of training the other neural network from scratch, we transfer the learn feature. Let me take an example, simple example so that we can like know the importance of transfer learning. So let me take an example of tribal growth, uh, like tribal knowledge growth. Uh, so uh, before our language was invented, uh, what was happening is the amount of knowledge passed down from one generation to the next generation 
was very low and the amount learned by the particular generation was also uh, not large or we can say very small so what was happening is uh, there was no medium uh, to transfer the knowledge from one generation to the another generation and uh, on other hand uh, within the generation uh, people sh have to start uh, learning things from the scratch or they have to invent things and then learn those things and uh, apply them for their use so these were the two problems we just discussed like uh, less learning rate in each generation number of knowledge amount pass was less but after our language was introduced uh, the numbers and the stats are totally different the amount of knowledge passed on from one generation to the next generation was uh, like quite high and the amount learned by particular generation uh, was also high because they have the learning from previous generation and they have their own learning too so this is how our transfer learning can like improve accuracy and the knowledge of a particular thing transfer learning is not only improving uh, computer vision and uh, image processing task but it is also changing our way of doing machine learning so a traditional machine learning was isolated and single task learning knowledge is not retained or accumulated learning is performed without considering the past learned knowledge in other tasks like on the left side we have uh, on the left diagram we have the data set one and we do a task one uh, like we are making our learning system with particular data set one when we encountered with data set two we have a different learning task uh, task two and we are not considering the knowledge gained by data set one on the other hand the right hand side what transfer learning is doing so transfer learning uh, like relies or we can say we can make uh, it relies on the previous learned task so learning process can be faster more accurate and it it will need less training data so on this diagram on the right hand we can see that uh, we are training our task 1 or task 1 learning system on data set 1 we are storing every knowledge of task 1 and uh, using it for the another situation or the another time we are encountered with data set 2 uh, so that it has it has now the learning of task 1 and the learning it gained from the data set 2 so that it can make uh, uh, these uh, like results or decisions more accurately so uh, in this webinar we are talking about current state of art in image processing or image classification so there are different uh, convolutional neural network architecture introduced nowadays for these uh, like for achieving transfer learning so these CNN architectures are actually uh, pre-trained models which, which are using through transfer learning for our different tasks. So let's un understand various architecture of convolution neural network. These are ResNet, AlexNet, VGGNet and Inception. So from where these architectures are introduced, there is a contest named uh, ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge. So, uh, this ImageNet is a large data set of annotated photographs intended for computer vision research. So, the goal of developing this data set was to provide a resource to promote the research and development of improvement, improve or improved methods for computer vision based on statistics about the data set recorded on imagenet homepage there are a little more than 14 million images in the data set a little more than 21000 groups or we usually say classes and a little more than 1 million images that have bounding box annotation uh, for example boxes around identified objects in the image so let's talk about our first CNN architecture. 
that is AlexNet. So AlexNet was born out of need to improve the result of ImageNet challenge. Like previously we had uh, like LayNet and different uh, mod models, but they are not up to the mark. Or we can say they didn't have that much accuracy on ImageNet dataset. So AlexNet was one of the first deep convolution neural network to achieve considerable accuracy on 2012 ImageNet challenge. And AlexNet has an accuracy of 84.7% as compared to the second best with an accuracy of 73.8%. So in difference of like around 11%. The idea of spatial correlation is an image frame was explored using convolution layers and respective fields. So AlexNet network consists of five convolution layers as you can see in this diagram. There are five convolution layer uh, followed by max pooling layer and uh, uh, three fully connected layer after these convolution layer. So the activation system or activation function used in AlexNet is ReLU function. The structural detail of each layers uh, you can see in this diagram. So the network has total of 62 million trainable variables. The output to this network is a batch of RGB images of size 227 into 227 into 3 and an output of uh, 1000 into 1. And it is a probability vector and the correspond, it corresponds to each class. So AlexNet used data augmentation to reduce overfitting. This data augmentation including mirroring and cropping the images to increase the variation in the training dataset. The network uses overlap max pooling layer after the first, second and fifth convolution layer. Overlap max pool layers are simply max pool layers with strides less than the window size. 3 into 3 max pool layer is used with a stride of 2 hence creating overlapped receptive fields. This overlapping improved the top 1 and top 5 error by 0.4% and 0.3% respectively. So before AlexNet was introduced, the most common used activation functions were sigmoid and tan. Due to saturated nature of these functions, they suffer from the vanishing gradient problem and it makes it difficult for the network to train. AlexNet uses ReLU activation function which doesn't suffer from the vanishing gradient problem. The original paper shows that the network with ReLU achieved 25% error rate about 6 times faster than that the same with TAN or sigmoid nonlinearity. <coughs> Sorry guys. Although ReLU helps the vanishing gradient problem but because of its unbounded nature, the learned variable can become unnecessarily high. In order to prevent this situation, AlexNet introduced local response normalization or we can say LRN. The idea behind LRN is to carry out a normalization in a neighborhood of pixel amplifying the excited neurons while damping the surrounding neurons at the same time. So, there was some problem with the uh, AlexNet as it's using too much number of parameters. So it make it uh, a little bit uh, like uh, there was a problem while training the AlexNet. So Alex, VGGNet was born out to need to reduce the number of parameters in a convolution layer and improve on training time. There are multiple variants of VGG like VGG 16 with 16 layer and VGG 19 with 19 layers which differs only in total number of layers in the network. VGG 16 has a total of 138 million parameters. The important point to note here is that all the convolution layer are of size 3 into 3 and max pool kernels are of size 2 into 2 with stride of 2. So this is the structural detail of VGG 16 uh, as we as I already told you it has 138 million of parameters. 
so vgg like it's very it was very painful to train vgg because it was uh, like it reduced the number of parameters but it it was very painful slow to train and the uh, feature which vgg net comes up with spatial pooling is like carried out by five max pooling layers which follow some of the convolution layer so uh, as of now uh, uh, it is witnessed that we had architecture or cnn architecture uh, mostly between 16 to 30 layer or we can say the maximum of 30 layers uh, so uh, despite the popular beam shared in ai communities from the movie inception uh, I hope you all uh, had seen the movie Inception and this guy's favorite, my, like my favorite. So the movie is stating that we need to go deeper. So empirically show this statement shows that there is a maximum threshold for depth with the traditional CNN model as an answer or as a result, there is a thing introduced called deep residual learning or we can say ResNet. So, uh, like our hierarchical feature and role of depth, or we can say depth of these layers, uh, its role is to like uh, identify low, mid and high level features. It was assumed that more layers in which the level of the features and the previous ImageNet models, as I already told you, are of depth uh, 16 to 30 layers. So the uh, main question here is learning better network as easy as stacking more layers. So uh, in short, can we have a better learning network by stacking more and more layers over each other? So ResNet research paper uh, opens with this uh, like answer to this. They trained a plain convolution neural network of 20 layer and 56 layer. And we can see the result in this diagram or this figure. So uh, this plot defies our like belief that adding more layers uh, would create a more complex function. Thus, the failure would be attributed to overfitting. If this was the cause, additionally, regularization uh, parameters and algorithms such as dropout or L2 norms would be a successful approach for fixing these network. However, this plot shows that the training error of the 56 layer network is a higher than 20 layer networks, highlighting a different phenomena explaining its failure. As I already told you, these evidence shows that the ImageNet model using convolutional and fully connected layer typically contain 16 to 30 layers. ResNet also comes up with constructual insight of an uh, like good or ideal convolution neural network architecture. So consider a shallow, it should consider a shallow architecture and its deeper counterpart. So a deeper model would just need to copy the shallower model with identity mapping and the constructual solution suggests that a deeper model should produce no higher training error than its shallower part or counterpart. So the failure of 56 layer CNN, uh, like as I already told you, uh, like blamed on optimization function, initialization of, of the network or the famous vanishing gradient problem. Vanishing gradients are especially easy to blame for this. However, the authors argue that the use of batch normalization ensured the gradient have healthy norms. Amongst the many theories explain why deeper have deeper network fails to perform better that their, than their shallower counterparts, it is something better to look for empirical result for explanation and work backward from there. The problem of training very deep network has been like alleviated with the introduction of new neural network architecture, that is the residual block. So. Uh, the picture uh, here is the most important thing to learn for developer it, it is looking to quickly implement this and test it out the most important modification to understand is the skip connection or identity mapping 
This identity mapping does not have parameter and is just there to add the output from previous layer to the layer ahead. However, sometimes x and fx will not uh, have the same dimension. Recall that a convolution operation typically shrinks the spatial resolution of an image. For example, if we have 3 into 3 convolution on a 32 into 32 image, that result in a 30 into 30 image. The identity mapping is multiplied by a linear projection W to expand the channels of shortcut to match the residual. This allows for the input X and FX to be combined as input to the next layer. If we have to see the difference between a previous model VGG19 and a plane layer of 34, uh, like 34 layer plane network and then 34 layer residual neural network. So the main thing to notice here is these dot lines in residual uh, like network. These are our skip connections which are taking input from our uh, like from our shallower part and give it to the next layer. So, residual uh, like research paper comes up with this example by showing that it's uh, like uh, the including of residual function uh, can can be an answer for that vanishing gradient and overfitting problem. They train their architecture uh, on 34 and uh, like 18 layers of ResNet architecture. And the straight line despites here the training error and the static line despites the testing error. The 34 layer ResNet achieves uh, sub 30% error rate uh, unlike the plane network on the left plot. So the 34 layer ResNet outperforms the 18 layer ResNet by 2.8%. The skip connections between layers add the output from, from previous layers to the output of the stack layer. This result in the ability to train much deeper network than what was previously possible. The author of ResNet architecture tests their network with 100 and 1000 layers on a CIFAR 10 dataset. They test on the ImageNet dataset with 152 layer, which still has less parameters than VGG network. An assemble of deep learning, or we can say deep residual network, achieve a 3.57 error rate on ImageNet, which achieve first place in ImageNet contest classification uh, in 2015, or in late 2014. So, if we have to summarize and uh, like. Uh, see the stats which are showing by these uh, convolutional architecture. AlexNet was uh, like more deeper or we can say first deeper uh, CNR architecture. So AlexNet and ResNet 152 both have about 60 million parameters but there is a difference uh, of about 10% in their top 5 accuracy. VGGNet not only has a higher number of parameters and a flop as compared to ResNet 152, but it also has a decreased accuracy. Training an AlexNet takes about the same time as training the inception, 10 times less memory requirement for training an AlexNet. So in conclusion, the skip connection is a very interesting or in like interesting uh, extension to deep uh, like convolution networks that have empirically shown to increase performance in ImageNet classification. These layers can be used in other tasks requiring deep networks as well as localization, semantic segmentation or uh, like generative adversarial networks or we can say GANs. Residual networks are different from LSTMs which get previous information or gain information uh, such as uh, that not all information passed through. Additionally, the skip connection shown in previous like previous slides arranged in two layer blocks. They do not use the input from the same layer three to the eight. Residual networks are more similar to attention mechanism uh, 
uh, in that they model the internal state of the network opposed to the inputs. So this was all about our CNN architectures. And as I already told you, I have an like uh, an application using these uh, like CNN architectures, and that is malaria cell detection. So this is a web application to detect uh, whether a cell image contain malaria infection or not. So let's go to the uh, notebook of the same. So this is a collab notebook, uh, uh, or I can say I am using Google Colab for its GPU feature. So here I am using the data set from Kegel, uh, a home for data science. So I am just importing my Kegel uh, credentials uh, by this command and like uh, downloading the whole data set here. Using the tree package, when I see my data set, uh, it is nearly about 13,780 entries uh, for both, uh, or we can say 13,780 images for both uh, infected and in uninfected cell images. So here I can see my CSE file. Uh, uh, these are my images or the address of images and these are the labels like the cell contain malaria or the cell is healthy. Here I am creating my train validation and test data set. Uh, Actually, we don't have the much time, so let me move forward to the main agenda. So here I am resizing my images. Uh, so I am making my images in a particular size or with the same size so that the training will be more accurate and more fast. If we have to see the sample cell images, this is how they like, they look like. So these are the infection or we can say malaria infection uh, consistent or uh, consist uh, in our blood cell images and these are the healthy cells. So here I am setting up some configuration and scaling my images and like encoding those cl label classes. So I am using a best size of 62 six, or sorry 64 and we have two classes like one is healthy and one is infected. I am training my network up to 25 epochs. So the main thing to main thing start from here also I am using uh, tensorflow 2.0 so main thing is uh, uh, to see the architecture I am using so here I am like creating my uh, simple CNN architecture from scratch so I am using three convolution layer followed by max pooling layers and and I have uh, like uh, two hidden layers or dropout layers and one output layer using sigmoid function for image classification task. So this is how my structure of like plain CNN architecture looks like. It has this much of layers uh, for our classification task. So when I train my model or my or I can say my simple model, simple CNN model uh, up to six, 25 epochs. So it gains a training accuracy of like uh, 99% uh, 99 and a validation accuracy of 95%. But the main problem arises when I see the uh, like training uh, history. So as we can see in this diagram, our training accuracy after nearly fifth epoch getting even more worst. Or I can say the validation accuracy uh, is going vast uh, with increasing of epochs. Also, our uh, validation lost, uh, or we can say validation loss value, keep on increasing after the fifth epoch. Uh, so uh, I can save my model with simple command model dot save. And after that, our main things come like transfer learning. So I am using uh, VGG nineteen network here. And it's very easy with TensorFlow to use these pre-trained models or pre-trained uh, CNN architectures. I have to simply, I had earlier make an object of TensorFlow TF. So I have to write tf.kras.application dot whatever network you want to use. Either it's VGG19 here, or you can use ResNet50, VGG16, or LXNet. So here I'm importing VGG19 with all weights uh, it learns from ImageNet contest or ImageNet dataset. 
I am freezing my convolution base so that I can leverage those uh, knowledge or the feature extracted by ImageNet dataset. So here I am using the base VGG, means the convolution base will be of VGG and I am adding my classifying layers into it. So when I see the summary of model or the structure of this model, I can see these are the uh, like convolution based layer starting from block. So these are the freeze uh, layers which will not trade uh, again. And these are the layers uh, like dance three, flattened one, dropout two, dance four, dance or dropout three. These are the layer I had added for the classified task. So we have in total 28 layers and the total trainable layers are six because I had freezed all the convolution base layers. When I trained my VGG19 architecture, it gains some somewhere 96% of uh, training accuracy and then validation accuracy of 94%, which is low from my C plain CNN architecture, which I had made from scratch. So uh, if we have to debug, uh, we can see that our validation accuracy is fluctuating with every number of epochs and it is not going that much high again from uh, nearly 10 epoch and uh, this is uh, like simply an overfitting so we have to like add something or uh, make our pre-processing of data even more accurate so as i already told you these pre-trained models uh, uh, used image augmentation for their accuracy to, or to like increase the number of data set so that it have it have a uh, number of uh, or type of images while uh, the training process so here i am doing my image augmentation it is also very simple with use of tensorflow we have to just import tf.keras.preprocessing.image.image uh, data generator and I am rescaling my image or zooming in zooming like increasing my zoom range and rotating images and sharing images and changing width and height of those images so after data augmentation the this is how my images look like you can see here I am flipping my image and rotate it by some degrees uh, after that uh, to like avoid previous uh, like previous training process we have seen that uh, there was a problem of overfitting uh, with our vgg19 uh, architecture so now we will fine tune our pre-trained cnn with image document like augmentation so again i i had like imported vgg19 architecture and freeze the convolution base and added my like classifier uh, layers so when i train my fine twin model uh, with image augmentation after 25th epoch it gives me 97 percent of training accuracy and then like best accuracy of uh, like validation accuracy of 96 percent so this is how image augmentation can make an impact on our learning process uh, you can also uh, see many blogs on image augmentation on our uh, like Noldus Machine X uh, blogs website. So if we see the training process now, uh, so the training process is like good for after we added image augmentation in our learning process. So now we just have to save our model with model.save and if I have to evaluate my uh, like all of the three uh, models so my basic CNN got an accuracy of 94.97 percentage my VGG19 frozen uh, got 93.76 percent of accuracy and my VGG19 which was fine-tuned with image augmentation got 96 percent of accuracy so this is how our transfer learning and pre-trained models making effect in our image processing or image classification so i had like uh, deployed this my my model uh, on render so we can have an 
live demo of this application. For example, uh, if we if I have to use this web application, I have to simply upload a cell image. Uh, like if we have to see this cell image contain of malaria infection. So just we have to click this button analyze and it will uh, like show us that this cell image uh, is parasitized or it contain the malaria infection. So let's try it with uh, non-infected cell image. So let's uh, upload this and it will result in uninfected. So this is how our pre-trained model and transfer learning uh, uh, is making impact on the accuracy of our model. Uh, and uh, this is like this is the impact they are making making on current state of art in image processing. These are the references I had used, like a uh, research paper of, on ImageNet classification with deep convolution neural network, or we can say different researchers, research papers. And thank you, these researchers, for these beautiful uh, solution for image processing tasks. So uh, you can also, if you want this collab notebook or this presentation, you can simply write down me at my mail address. Uh, as it is already shared with you all. So thank you all for joining me in this webinar session. Hope uh, you will attend uh, like all of uh, others. So thank you all.